Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far. I hope everybody's doing good and feeling great. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a situation that is related to finding people online. We've talked about this before on dating apps and meeting up with them and going out on dates. Before we get into it though, I did wanna let you guys know if you don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We just do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon's for 18 and up, and over there we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there. It is a good time if you are 18 and up and you would like to join. Um, I also have a $2 tier where all of the like true crime stuff or C theory type of stuff that cannot go onto YouTube due to their terms and policies that goes over on my Patreon under the $2 tier. Just make sure you read the about section and what each tier offers before you join. I also have a Facebook. I'm on Snapchat and I'm on, where else am I? I'm on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and I'm on like to know it and like to know it is where you can find links to a lot of my favorite items, cooking stuff, clothing, makeup, lashes, hair, just things that you guys ask about. I link all of that onto my like to know it and all of those platforms are linked down in the description box if you would like to come and check me out. Before we go any further, I just want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, chef prepared, dietitian approved, nutritious, and delicious meals right to your front door. Eat stress free this spring. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 different options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast, on the go lunch, snacks and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. No fuss and no mess meals takes all of the hassle, the thinking and the planning out of meal prepping. And if you guys don't know, Factor has these gourmet meals as well. I love them. I love getting the surf and turf where you can get like some filet mignon with a little bit of shrimp on the side and a life hack. Sometimes I will get three gourmet meals in one week when I'm ordering my Factor meals. That way, a night that I wanna have like a freebie night from cooking, I can just serve myself, my husband, and my son the delicious gourmet meals and they're getting steak, shrimp, and a good side. They're getting high nutrition. It's very delicious. And all I gotta do is pop it in the microwave for like two and a half to three minutes. It is seriously a mom cheat code. I also really enjoy their wellness shots and their chocolate protein shakes. So make sure when you're checking out the menu, you look at everything they have because they have so much good stuff. If you've been wanting to try Factor, now is definitely your chance because all you gotta do is go to factor75.com, use my code ChristinaRandall50, and you can get 50% off of your first box and get 20% off of your second box and save big time while your subscription is active. Yes, all you gotta do is go to factor75.com, use my code ChristinaRandall50, and you can save today. Thanks again, Factor. So let's talk about Grace. Mullane. Grace Mullane was born on December 2nd of 1996 in Wickford, Essex to her parents, David and Jillian. She was the youngest of three siblings and she had two older brothers. Now, Grace was known to be very, very friendly. She was sociable. She was outgoing. She loved her family. She was very close with her family and she also loved art and she loved to paint in her spare time. Grace had actually recently during this time graduated from the University of Lincoln with a bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing. Now, after graduating, she decided that she was going to spend a year backpacking across the world, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, you think about yourself or maybe your children and they're, they're just, you know, doing all the right things. They go on to college, graduate college, and then they take a year off and they're gonna go backpacking and travel and see all of these beautiful places around the world, which is a dream come true. 
Okay. So in November of 2018, Grace was 21 years old at this point, And she had just finished spending six weeks in South America when she decided to go spend two weeks in the beautiful New Zealand. Grace arrived in New Zealand on November 20th of 2018. And she went up to spend time around the upper North Island. Then on November 30th, she went to Auckland. Grace was looking forward to celebrating her 22nd birthday in Auckland, but unfortunately, she never got the opportunity. On December 2nd, which was Grace's 22nd birthday, Grace's parents began to text her and reach out to her to tell her happy birthday. But Grace never responded to any of their messages. She didn't answer anybody's phone calls and she was not responding to anybody on social media, which was definitely weird and not like Grace because even throughout this whole entire trip, Grace had been sending all kinds of pictures to her parents and to her brothers and her siblings. And she had stayed very, like very close with them, even while she was in a totally different part of the world. So after three days of them not hearing from her, and I know her parents were freaking out because she's in another part of the world. She texts all the time. It's her birthday and they don't, they don't hear anything from her. So after that three days, this is when her parents became overwhelmed with concern and they decided to call the police in Auckland and this is when they reported her missing. Now the cops immediately began to investigate and just a week after on December 8th, the investigators announced that after gathering a bunch of evidence, they believed that Grace was no longer alive and that moving forward, they were gonna be treating this situation like a hump. That same day, a 26-year-old man named Jesse Kempson was arrested in charges with Grace's ending of her life. Now, who is Jesse? Because when she left to go travel around the world, Grace didn't have a boyfriend. Well, Jesse was born and raised in the Wellington region of New Zealand. His parents divorced when he was nine years old. And after that divorce, Jesse's mother moved herself and Jesse's brother to Australia. Jesse then stayed with his father and his grandfather. Growing up, Jesse played softball and he did what everybody said was like, pretty good in school. And as he got older, he went into working jobs like he was bartending. And then he spent a lot of his time living in Sydney, Australia before moving back to New Zealand. At this point, Jesse had became pretty distant from his family and started to what other people around him would consider to be like acting out, acting different, becoming maybe himself or a different person than maybe they knew. Most actually referred to him as a pathological liar at this point. He was arrested for having a DUI and he also got arrested for disorderly conduct in both Auckland and in Sydney. And to make matters worse, not only did people consider him to be a pathological liar, like anything he told you, you really needed to have it fact-checked, but he could not keep a job for nothing. Every time he got a job, he was getting fired, he was moving to the next job, and he was just completely strange, untrustworthy, distant, and became like a stranger to people who knew him. But how did the investigators know that Grace ended up having her life ended and that Jesse was the one who did it? The investigators found this out because a week after Grace's life ended, and before Jesse's arrest, they gathered a mountain of evidence against Jesse. The investigators went to find where she was staying, the hotel. And when they went in and they spoke with the people at the hotel, this is when the hotel workers told the investigators that Grace never came back to her room the night of December 1st. This gave the investigators a very specific timeline. Then the investigators were able to trace Grace's steps with security camera footage from local restaurants and a local hotel that would show Grace's final hours with Jesse. As the cops looked at the security camera footage, they saw that Grace was seen having drinks with a man at three different locations that evening. At 9.31 p.m., a camera showed her and the same man in an elevator at a hotel called City Life. When the investigators saw Grace on this footage with this guy going to these different places, 
The investigators would later learn that Grace had met this mystery man on no other but Tinder. This is when the investigators were able to determine that this man was Jesse Kempson and they ended up matching him up because he had actually commented on one of Grace's Facebook photos the same night that her life ended. When the investigators went to this guy, Jesse, they asked him to come in for questioning and he said sure and he agreed. Now in Jesse's first interview, he appeared to be polite, cooperative, and willing to talk. He told the investigators that he and Grace did in fact go out on a date that night of uh, December 1st, but that they had gone their separate ways at around 10 p.m. Jesse told them that he actually hadn't seen Grace since they split that evening. The investigators at some point got up and left out of the room and left him in the room by himself. And this is a tactic that we see a lot of the times with interrogators is they will leave the person that they are interviewing or interrogating in a room by themselves to see how they act, to see what they do. I mean, you guys, we've seen, you know, we've seen Shayna Huber do handstands and sing songs while she was in there by herself. I mean, people do pretty odd things when they're by themselves, but Jesse decided to get up and knock on the door and ask if he was being arrested. Uh, so I was talking to Grace on Tinder. Yeah. Um, we'd matched on Friday. I saw that we'd matched um, the next day on Saturday. Yeah, that's us. Down there. Yep. So she's going that way, and I'm going across the street. We're very, very concerned for her safety, obviously. Yep. Um, it's entirely possible that she's been the victim of foul play. Okay. Do you understand what that means? Yeah. What would your feelings be about providing us with a voluntary DNA sample in the event that we can compare that against something? Would you be happy uh, with yeah, that? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I know I haven't done anything wrong, so I'm happy to do it. Okay. Don't know if she's been murdered or not yet. She may be alive and well. Okay. But she might also be dead. Okay. Okay? And it could be that you've done it. Hey, I just want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Have I been arrested for something I didn't do? You've ever been arrested for? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, sorry. Holy sh However, because the investigators already seen the security camera footage from the City Life Hotel, they knew that Jesse was lying. Investigators saw in the security camera footage that Grace went with Jesse up to his room and Jesse came back down at some point, but they never saw Grace leave his room. This is when Jesse became the prime suspect in this investigation. And then on December 8th, he was indeed arrested. The very next day after Jesse was arrested, on December 9th, Grace's body was found in the mountains about 12 miles outside of Auckland. When her body was retrieved, they ended up sending it out for an autopsy to find out what was her COD, okay, her cause of death. When the report came back, it came back that her COD was from strength. This is when the investigators went to Jesse so they could question him again. This time, Jesse added a few details to his story that he didn't tell the investigators before. He went on to tell them that when him and Grace got back up to his hotel room, that Grace began to ask him for very rough relations. He told the investigators that she wanted him to do these things, okay? And he said that he accidentally, basically, he accidentally went too far with her while he was consensually doing that. He then told the investigators that he went to sleep and when he woke up the next morning, he found Grace on the floor and she was gone. When the investigators asked him why he changed his story, Jesse said, because of her family, I want her family to know it wasn't intentional, but I also want her family to have closure. She started talking to me about uh, 50 shades of gray. Um, so I went into the shower and, and then all I remember is falling asleep in the shower. I, I need, I need to stop. Um, I went downstairs and I was just, I don't know, I was all over the place. 
we're going to head out of here very, very soon, and you're going to take us to where you've buried her. Yeah. Um, she will likely be exhumed tomorrow, okay. or at some point, and after that, they will, a pathologist, a specialist doctor, will perform a post-mortem. Yeah. They're very skilled yeah. at establishing people's causes of death. Kill Grace Mullane. Jesse Kempson, you're under arrest for the murder of Grace Mullane. But the investigators still knew that he was lying. In the hours and the days after Grace's passing, Jesse did several things that made it look like it was not an accident at all. As a matter of fact, the very next day after Grace's life was taken from her, Jesse went online and he Googled things like what makes the hottest fire. He Googled rigor mortis, he googled carpet cleaner, he googled flesh eating birds, and then he spent time on, listen to this you guys, he spent time on dirty sites, okay, and took seven different pictures that we know of, of her, and he was looking at these dirty sites while she was still there. I should probably throw in here that when he took these photos of her, he positioned her body into positions that he wanted her to be in. And just to take it to the next level, Jesse was still on Tinder messaging other women to meet up for dates the very next day. When he went to meet up with one woman, Jesse told her some weird story about a man who had asked his girlfriend to have rough and he accidentally ended her. So he literally just did this did the pictures, did all of this stuff, okay? Does whatever he does with her, goes on a date, he's, he's, on, he's on Tinder, setting up his next date, messaging who knows who, maybe somebody even watching this video, maybe some of y'all, please be careful out there, goes on a date and starts telling this weird story. <sighs> Jesse uh, also ended up renting a carpet cleaner and he bought a suitcase that day as well. But that wasn't it for the security camera footage because the very next day after the situation with Grace, the security camera footage at the hotel showed him wheeling his newly bought suitcase out of the hotel. This was the suitcase where Grace was found. The next morning after that, Jesse would go on to go to a store and he bought a shovel and then he went to the mountains to bury Grace. When he came back to the City Life Hotel, the police were there waiting for him. Jesse tried to turn around and leave without being seen by the cops, but they caught him and this is when they ended up taking him into custody. After Jesse was taken away, his room was examined, and this is when they were able to find huge red stains. The stains were not red anymore because he cleaned them, but you know, they put one of those lights on the carpet, even though he cleaned it, and it lit up like the type of scene that you know something really bad happened there. Then the next day, which at this point was December 10th, the prime minister did go and make a public apology to Grace's family in a press conference. On behalf of New Zealand, I want to apologize to Grace's family. Your daughter should have been safe here and she wasn't and I'm sorry for that. On January 16th of 2019, Jesse went in and he pled not guilty. His trial then started on November 4th of 2019. The prosecution went on to present their case and they said that Jesse ended Gracie's life in cold blood and they presented all the evidence that they had against him. Something that came as a surprise to some people, but definitely not as a surprise to others, is three different female witnesses that Jesse had also met through the app Tinder ended up testifying against him. Just eight months before Grace's death, Jesse had allegedly Ard, another British tourist in his hotel room after a date that they had together. She went on to say that she never told anyone about this incident until she recognized Jesse on the news. Another woman came up to testify saying that she met Jesse on the Tinder app and then when she 
met with him, he told her that he was into feet dominating strangulation because it made him feel more superior and more in control. And then the third woman that testified was actually Jesse's ex-girlfriend. She testified saying that Jesse had threatened her many a times. She even said that he threatened her with a knife and he forced her to participate in S acts that she was definitely not comfortable with. But his defense team come up and presented the case that it was a total accident. Imagine him getting up there and saying that she wanted this, that that baby girl, 21 years old, like going out to travel and see the world meets this guy that she thinks is handsome. You know, he said all the right things on that date to get her back to that hotel room and she thought she was going into her 22nd birthday with a night to remember and then he gets up here and his defense is that it was an accident a result in the joking that she wanted they even said that jesse didn't end up calling the police afterwards because he panicked so he buried her instead. But a doctor did come up and testify that Jesse would have had to apply significant pressure to Grace's neck for four to five minutes in, in, to end up doing what he did and that it couldn't have just been an accident. On November 22nd of 2019, the jury returned with a guilty verdict of after just deliberating for only five hours. Do you find the defendant, Jesse Shane Kempson, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And Jesse was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in just 17 years. The justice system is different there than here in America. I know a lot of people um, overseas think ours are too harsh, but then when you hear of something like this and think in just 17 years, a person like this can be back on the street, back using apps or whatever, it is is awful to think about. Jesse was later convicted of nine total charges of R, an essay threatening to attack other people and, and other stuff like that. And he ended up having two separate trials, one in October and one of November of 2020. And there was, and, the, and those cases were not connected to Grace's at all. Grace's family, I mean, obviously no amount of time, whether it's 17 years or 1700 years, is going to bring their precious daughter back. You think about, and I, th I literally think about this all the time as a mother is, you know, you raise your child up. You, you have your child in your stomach. You connect with them in that way. You birth them. You worry about every little thing, every little sneeze, cough. You watch them teeth and, you know, you watch them grow their hair and start to walk. And then they go to kindergarten with their backpack that is way too big for their body. And you cry and cry and cry. And then you watch them go through you know, every grade and then they start middle school and you watch your child in middle school is hard for your kids because middle school is a weird age. And then they go into high school and they're nervous because they're going to high school and then they start making friends and they're having fun and then they graduate. And it's like such a wonderful moment. And you're proud of your child because they have worked for this, you know, this diploma and then they go to college and they work hard there and graduate. And then they're going to go and travel the world and you're getting pictures and you're so happy that your child is happy and you know that in a year less at this point where grace was at she was going to be starting her career and starting a whole new venture in life and so you just want her to have fun while she can and then she meets a guy on tinder that says all the right things and everything stops after all, I mean, I cannot imagine, I can, because I do, but it's, that sucks. So her mother and her cousin actually went on to create a charity called Love Grace, and it works to help women affected by DV situations. Grace's father passed away from cancer not long after the trial in November of 2020, and I can't imagine how difficult that was on not only him, but the whole family, because now he is going through cancer, watching the trial, and then afterwards he passed away. Such a devastating, sad situation. Y'all be careful out there.
Be careful. I know that the, and I talk about this with you guys. I'm going to just say it over and over again, like a broken record every time. So forgive me. I love you guys. Uh, these dating apps are the new way that a lot of people are trying to connect. And just remember that people can say all the right things. They can tick all the boxes. They can look a certain way. And as sucky as it is, you got you got to be careful. You can't let your guard down too quickly. And it sucks because we should be able to. We ought to be able to go out and have fun. We ought to be able to trust that a person that we're going out with to dinner and a bunch of places is not planning on putting us in a suitcase and taking us to the mountains somewhere, right? But unfortunately, it does happen. And one of the things that I am grateful for with doing these types of videos is it has really shown a lot of people that people that do certain things, they don't have a certain look, right? They're not all boogeymans in a white van. Sometimes they look very well put together, well-mannered, and say all the right things. Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Y'all be careful out there. Pray for me. I pray for you. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.